Welcome to Immersion, you have reached Strata 4. There is an old saying from when the world had stories made of paper, that you cannot judge a book by its cover, but sometimes, without metadata, you only have the outside to show what may be on the inside. Some societies, past and present, believe that the shape of a person's head, their facial features, or the way they move their bodies, could reveal their true feelings or intent. How would an android make sense of the tiny signals that humans pick up on, the millions of minute evolving syntax and expressions, subconscious or otherwise, create feelings that can cause distrust or even invoke attraction? These are essential to humans and less easy to create or mimic in even advanced computerized systems. How do these assumptions translate across times and cultures? Without gut feelings, these seemingly random hunches and instincts are senseless. How do machines function in an unfamiliar environment? A deeper knowing is the ability to immediately understand something without conscious reasoning. It would seem that the bigger the data, the less the machines are able to explain these innate human idiosyncrasies. In the attempt to create a facsimile of a human, the machines move further away from the truth. Asterisk 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 Renait kicked the robot dog, and it went flying high up in the air. It fell to the ground with a metallic crush scattering its parts asunder and making mechanical screeching sounds. There was a general momentary hush as everyone realized Renaik may be best avoided. Maybelline climbed inside the leather coat to keep out of any ensuing danger. The robot dog made several bleeping sounds and drew its broken metallic components back onto its magnetic mainframe. Finally, after a 30-second system reboot, it got up and shook its fake hair once again assembling a perfect dog. As Renaik walked on the dog remained at heel, obedient, quiet, and protective. They were now given room to move through the throng, the dodgy-looking man offering bits, and Nibs was also running at Renaik's side to keep up. My name is Flex, you need anything, man, I got your back. For sure, for sure, I can do all sorts, I got connects in it, I know these streets, I'm a good worker, good mugger, got drugs, all sorts, survived in it, people like you need people like me, no one knows the zones like the asterisk, Urch Renike walked on ignoring his now irritating companion who was running, talking, and panting all at once as he tried to keep up, a child beggar approached. Renike's scanner showed it to be human, around seven years old. Hey mister, nice man, spare, some bits for a hungry blind child. Renike looked down and saw a large, black hollow where the boy's eye once was. His face was scarred from deep cut wounds and he only had one ear and one arm. Give the boy something, Renike scowled at Flex. Flex, somewhat wary, after the incident with the dog dug deep into a pocket and reluctantly gave the boy a bit piece. Now fuck off your lil shit, said Flex in a disgruntled manner. You can't trust these beggars you know. They have owners and gangs, Flex informed Renike in an all-knowing tone. The street was lined with ramshackle stalls and shops. They were noisy and crowded with bustling colourful people. Many had tribal markings on their faces. Others wore decorated eyewear and some wore masks. Most of the people here wore flamboyant garments with outlandish fashion concepts that seemed impractical to Renike's streamlined functionality. A woman approached. She was dressed in bright, colourful clothes with huge feathers and sequins. She had some kind of cat on a lead. Renike engaged the POS focusing on the cloth, pertraline, Fabric made from plastic, non-biodegradable, colorfast, banned in 2050, problematic for practical landfill solutions. Then he queried the face coverings. It is thought that tribal face markings in the zones are mostly to avoid face recognition from satellites and covert surveillance, but different factions and groups have adopted MA, the uniform styles which change regularly to avoid detection and discovery, but are understood in the underground activities as tribal and connective, possibly even familial. Hey, 
Mister, you need something. You want some peewitty clothes. I swap the coat for a Nias jacket I got me just yesterday. Renike shook his head. You want some tits en us, maybe. Food. Man, you look hungry in yo skinny moves. Renike continued walking, not really sure what the woman meant. The dialect was a strange mix of unknown words and intonation. A bank, maybe, or a charged point. Renike stopped suddenly and queried. There's a bank, of course, said the woman. What you take us for, wild, ignorant animals? She laughed hysterically at her own joke, and Renike smiled. Yes, I need a bank, he said. Come with me, said the woman. To be continued. Listen to all Strata episodes at isavallon.com.